This is the $25 Walmart Budget Fishing Challenge. <gasps> There we go, dude. Oh my God. I got $25 and we're gonna be going into the Walmart behind us and spending it on whatever fishing lures we would like to buy. With $25 in Walmart, that's usually gonna get you about five fishing lures. To complete today's challenge, we have to catch a fish on each of the five baits we buy inside of Walmart. But there's a twist. Each lure that we complete has to be in a different pond. For an example, we have five baits. Bait number one, we have to catch a fish in one pond. Bait number two, we have to catch a fish in a different pond. Bait number three, we have to catch a fish in a different pond and so on. So we can't just catch a fish on all five of the lures in one or two ponds. It has to be a fish on all five of the lures in five different locations. Now that we know the rules, let's go ahead and get inside of Walmart see the selection they have and pick out our lures to catch fish on today. Before we get deeper into this video, only 27% of you all watching these videos are actually subscribed. So if you could take the time, hit the subscribe button, it really helps the channel, I'd appreciate it. We have finally made it to the Walmart fishing section, baby. There's been a lot of people up in here, man. And I've been just trying to stay cool, you know, kind of keep my lane. And I've been waiting on people to leave, but we're gonna pick out our five baits out of the whole section. So I kind of want to run down this and kind of show y'all, you know, the different sections that we can pick baits from and then kind of decide, okay, these are the five that we're going to go with for 25 bucks. But I think I'm really thinking five baits for $25 is what we're going to go with today. So let's go ahead and see what they got. So right here, you're pretty much going to have all the bass soft plastics. So you're going to have like some flukes that we got right there. You're going to have some swim baits. You're going to have some curly tail worms. You're gonna have some finesse worms, pretty much anything bass fishing, you're gonna find right there in that soft plastic section. Moving over here, we got some more soft plastics, just different brands. Right here, we got a bunch of different swim baits that we could possibly try out today. Over here, we got some other moving baits. We got spinner baits, we got chatter baits, we got crank baits, we got lipless crank baits, even jerk baits. But uh, yeah, that's kind of right here. We got the crappy section, and then over here, we have the salt water, which I don't know if we're gonna mess around with salt water today. Maybe that'd be for another video. But out of all these sections, I kind of want to start off over here in the soft plastic. So it is summertime. And if you guys know anything about the summer, it has been hot, guys. It has been humid. And we're probably gonna have to slow down a little bit today for these bass. So I wanna pick out a couple soft plastics and then I wanna move over to the hard baits, possibly pick out a few of those and then maybe pick, pick out like an oddball item, <laughs> either an oddball item or maybe even a top water. Like one thing I was gonna show y'all, look at this, dude. I can't even believe that they keep all of this here in Walmart. Like, I don't even know how this stuff don't smell, man. Like you got minnows, you got a bunch of nasty stuff. This is cut squid. Like we're not, we're definitely not gonna be using any of this stuff today. If you guys wanna see a video though, with all these uh, crazy, not necessarily live baits, but dead bait. Let me know, man. We'll we'll film a video fishing with all this stuff. But I walked in here and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a wide variety of baits like that. All right, so we're gonna start off in the soft plastic section. This is gonna be our bread and butter today. Like I said, we're gonna catch some stuff on moving baits, maybe even some top water. But this is our bread and butter at the end of the day. So let's go ahead and look and see what they got. So down here they have some finesse worms. They have some bubblegum finesse worms, some white finesse worms. Um, up top, they actually have some watermelon red finesse worms. These are actually a lot smaller. That's always like a good go-to. I mean, I could rig this up on a drop shot. I could put it on a Texas rig. I could fish it weightless. There's so many different things I can do with that bait. But to be honest, guys, there's one bait that I always catch fish on that we have to buy today. And that's gonna be the fluke, man. But one thing that I noticed is they actually don't have the pearl white fluke. So this is actually just a swim bait in pearl white. They have the bigger swim bait in pearl white, but they don't have any pearl white flukes, which is my favorite color. But I did notice that they have this rainbow shad. So this has got like a little blue, little sparkle to it. 
that can be a good color, especially when it's sunny out. But today is going to be iffy, guys. A little bit of sun, a little bit of clouds. And I would almost feel more comfortable with the smoke and shag color. It's got some like darkish gray on top, and it's got some white and gray mixture on the bottom. I feel like that's going to be our better color to go with since they don't have the standard pearl white. So that is going to be our first bait of choice, the old fluke. This is just a go-to bait, guys, any time of the year. If you guys want to catch fish, I'm telling you, throw a fluke. You can throw it on just a regular extra wide gap hook, throw it weightless, and I promise you guys, you'll get bites. It does not matter the time of the year. Fish this thing slow, fish it fast, it's very versatile. So with us getting a fluke, I either want to go with a worm or maybe a crawl, or maybe even both. Maybe we go with three soft plastics. And there was one crawl in particular that I saw that I really like, and it is the green pumpkin rage crawl or not rage crawl um <laughs> speed crawl and this is just a bait that i've caught a lot of fish on over the years it's uh kind of my go-to if i'm in walmart that i usually get you know the rage crawl is usually my favorite um either the rage crawl or the mock crawl that's what we've been catching fish on but that speed crawl right there and green pumpkin that can get it done so that is going to be our second bait of choice so there we go, we got two soft plastics, but before we even pick the third one, I kind of want to go over to the hard baits and kind of have an idea on what we want to do. We can either go with three hard baits or we can go with three soft plastics. With it being the summertime, I'm just feeling like we need to go with three soft plastics, but I could be wrong guys, maybe there's a good selection here and we might want to go with the hard baits. So you guys already know the chatter donk, baby. This is one of my favorite baits of all time. And this thing just smokes fish. And the good thing about the chatter donk is we're probably gonna wanna put a trailer on it. But the problem is we don't have a trailer, but if we buy these flukes, we can easily put it on the back of that chatter donk and it fit perfectly. So that's a good option. We also have some spinner baits right here, which spinner baits recently have just been killing it for me, mainly on the river, but on a cloudy day that has a little bit of wind like today, that spinner bait should get bit. So we have the chatterbait, we have the spinnerbait, we have lipless crankbaits over here, which is just like a go-to, guys. Lipless crankbait is another bait thrown in these ponds that fish just love. They can't resist, and I always seem to catch fish on liplesses. And then we even have an option of a buzzbait, which would be killer. I don't know if we're gonna do this in today's video, but a buzzbait could be killer. I kinda wanna grab like one top water. Like that's kinda like, one thing that I would like to do out of the five baits, I feel like we should have at least one. And they always have like all these clearance bins that we can find stuff like, look at that. There's a Strike King Frog right there. That would be killer to go with today. I'm not going to lie. That, that might be the top order that we go with because who doesn't like frog fishing? You know, we frog fished in one of the recent river videos for river monsters. Something about a frog bite is just so much fun. So I feel like that's really all of our options for the hard baits. We also have <laughs> this puppy's actually been killing it for me. This sexy dog, and that's in bone color. That is perfect for a cloudy day. That's also another bait that we could kill it on. Even jerk baits, I mean, that's another option. But to be honest, guys, I don't really want to go with the chatterbait because I feel like every challenge we film, I go with the chatterbait. So today, I want to switch it up. I want to be a little different. With that being said, I want to go with the spinnerbait. So we have two options. We have a willow leaf blade, and we have a Colorado blade. The Colorado blade, which is the round blade here, is gonna put off a little heavier thump. If I'm fishing some super muddy water, this is probably what I'm gonna throw. But to be honest with y'all, with how finicky these summer bass have been, I feel like our best bet is probably gonna be this Booyah one with the willow leaf blade. This is a white and chartreuse. I feel like just a good color overall. And this is gonna be our third bait of choice. So I'm having a hard time, guys, because I was saying, what if we get three soft plastics? But to be honest with you, I want to get a lipless crankbait and there's three different colors here in the Strike King Red Eye Shad. There's a chartreuse sexy shad. There's another sexy shad with a little bit of chrome on it, which can be really good, you know, when there's sun out. But I think our safe bet is probably the, just the standard sexy shad color right here. But the Red Eye Shad has been proven to catch fish for me year round. And this is going to be bait number four. So we talked about getting three soft plastics because of the summertime, but I kind of want to spice it up, guys. And I think you would want to see it too. Instead of us getting another soft plastic, like we could get a Sanko, we could get a finesse worm, we could do whatever, or we could even go with like a chatterbait. But I really want to spice it up now. We got to spice it up, baby. And we're going to go 
with this strike king frog man for our fifth and final bait i just feel like this right here could catch a really big one today we all love frog fishing something about it is just so exciting so that is going to be our fifth and final bait option the top water frog all right boys and girls we just left walmart we got out to our first pond and it is time to get it started we got a couple different combos with us today we got a mock crush with braid on it this is obviously going to be for our top water frog and then we have a kicking their bass tv x loose combo if you guys want to check out the kicking combos you can check them out on my website kickingtheirbass.com they'll be linked down below it is fishing season baby go get you a kicking combo and catch some fish this summer and now we have our bag of walmart goods baby i just want to go over it real quick really short and sweet and then kind of strategize a game plan on what we're going to throw at this pond so our first bait is a strike king red eye shad this isn't sexy shad you know we got a little bit of clouds a little bit of sun i think this is a good mixture for what we need this bait for bait number two we got the speed crawl and this is in green pumpkin very basic this is a bait that can get bites any time of the year and the same with this bait this is uh just a smoking shad fluke that's another killer bait that we're going to be able to get bites on bait number four we got a booyah spinner bait this is a white and chartreuse willow leaf blade we're going to get smoked on this puppy too i have a feeling and for the fifth and final bait we got a top water frog baby that's exciting we're probably going to hold off on this for a little bit because i'm telling y'all we're going to catch a big one on this today so without further ado guys we're going to get this started and uh, i'm going to pick out one bait to fish at this pond and if we don't catch fish on it we can obviously switch up to another bait and try it out but we just can't catch two fish in the same pond today so with that being said we have our flutes our crawls which i think would be really good baits we have our spinner bait we have our frog and our lipless in this pond in particular i'm really thinking the spinner bait guys which is the white and chartreuse spinner bait this pond has some really big fish and i just have a weird feeling that we can smoke a big one on the spinner bait so let's go ahead and break this puppy out of the package tie her on a rod and get the casting now as you guys can tell we got a scale we got some pliers with us today if we catch a giant we're gonna be able to weigh her man we gonna be able to weigh her and the ponds that we're going to today have some really big fish so y'all better stay tuned man stay tuned we gonna be catching some donkeys and by the way if you guys have been liking these challenges let me know down below and if you guys have a challenge in particular you want to see comment it down below what challenge should we do next all right we're just gonna set our scale right there just in case we need it make sure everything's good on this kicking combo we got 17 pound line on this puppy we're gonna check our drag make sure everything's good that spinnerbait right there man that thing is looking flossy boys hey look at flossy spinnerbaits have been killing it for me recently and mainly on the river you know we've been on the boat here and there and we're gonna be getting back on that thing this week but I had to go hit some ponds because i feel like it's been forever we're going to start off right here in this little pocket cast around a few times and there is some spicy looking waters down here to the left of us and one thing i didn't even think about guys look at the slop in this corner i mean this would have been perfect for the frog but i kind of want to hold off until towards the end of the video for the frog guys and there's a fish that just blew up top water on the edge of that bank Whew. fun fact the first time i ever fished this pond the first bite I had was on this tree and it was with a frog. I ended up losing the fish, but it was a giant dude. And this was actually in the summertime last year. So maybe we'll find us another giant right there. Come on. Like, does that not look too good? How is there not a fish on that tree? One thing that we need to be careful with today is gators. Some of these ponds we go into get some big gators. There's like a swamp, little creek right behind this woods here. So we just need to keep our eyes peeled, man. You never know. And especially if you guys are on the water down in some of the southern areas just be careful man them gators are fast i've seen some crazy videos this is where the magic happens now we got a little bit of wind over here too perfect for this spinner bait this is where some of the last times i've been out here i found some really big fish it's a little deeper on this side a little more open not as much cover and not as much grass but there's little ditches out there in the middle that usually hold some good fish. If you guys want to see what happened last time we threw a spinner bait in the summer, roll that clip. Adam. Adam. 
I'm telling you, man, don't sleep on the spinner bait. That thing catches some monster fish. Some absolute giants. Been a while since I fished this pond too. I decided to give it a break for at least two or three months. The last time I came out here, the water like turned over. It was a weird color and I could barely even get any bites in here. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna give it a break. But shit, it looks good. The water looks great. Oh, oh my gosh. I went to pop my bait, dude, and she pulled back on me. That was a good bite. It felt like that fish just grabbed the blade, like he actually didn't have the hook. Maybe they're not one the spinner bait. Maybe that's what it is. Guys, this pond is just not working out. We're gonna we're gonna hit a different place. I think the spinner bait can definitely get a fish. But this pond, they are just not wanting it. Let's keep on moving. All right, boys and girls, that first pond did not work with the spinner bait, but we're back at it again at a new spot. And we're gonna see if we can get a bite on this thing, man. We don't even need, it's not like we need 10 bites on this. We just need one bite and then we can get moving on to the next bait. And this pond has a lot dirtier water, very murky. It's still a pretty small pond, but I think we should be able to get a bite on this spinner bait. I just had a feeling to come out of this place and I'm like this far corner right here is what I had on my mind Ooh, fish boiled right on the bank when I cast it in there and as you guys can tell you know it just necks down in this little pocket and then you got this pipe over here and I've only been to this pond a few times but I caught a couple four pounders back here before I'm gonna tell you we fished some juicy looking spots today we just need some action Seems like these fishes aren't one to chase, which is kind of what I was predicting in Walmart earlier. And that's why I want to go with some slow moving baits. But honestly, we're living life on the edge, man. Screw it. We're going to get it done either way. Oh my gosh, he hammered it. Let's go, baby, come on. Not a big one, but gosh, did he hammer that thing. After not having a bite all day, the way that he ate that freaking spinner bait, dude. Let's go. Well, that is bait number one, knocked off at pond number one. Spinner bait is complete. They were giving us a hard time, but we got us a fish and Look at his tail, man. Poor, poor guy. He was hungry, though. He hammered that spinnerbait, dude. At least it's a healthy one. Not a big one, but fat and chunky. Thank you so much, buddy. Thank you for biting. <laughs> there he goes. All right, boys. Bait number one, spinnerbait is complete. We're knocking her off the list, cutting her off her rod. And our second bait of choice is going to be the Red Eye Shad Lipless Crankbait. I'm out at a different pond now that still has some really good fish in this one. And uh, we're going to try to hook one of these giants on the lipless. I've had a lot of luck in this pond with the lipless before. So hopefully they're fired up for it now. I'm just glad we got that spinnerbait knocked off, man. Spinnerbait is such a good bait, but man, those fish were just not eating it, man. I don't know what it was. They were not having it. But I will say that one fish that we caught on it, the bite was awesome. There we go, old red eye shad in the sexy shag color i'm telling you that's perfect for today guys let's go ahead and make some cast around here there's a big pipe right here that i've lost some big fish in the past also caught some really good ones on then the far end of the lake there's a lot of big fish that stack up so let's start casting all right big fish come on now there's actually some rocks right here in front of this pipe that i'm going to be pinging this lipless crankbait off of first time i ever fished this place i, I had a freaking big one come off he jumped right off right at the bank then i started coming out to this place and started hooking some big ones on a lipless so i think we got the perfect bait and the perfect pond realistically i just would think that they would bite this better than the spinner bait and we just might be right we already caught us a stick man almost looks like we got a dang slingshot it's <laughs> just a stick with a bunch of string attached to it well, there's our first bait, or there's our first fish on the dang lipless. 
Only if that counted. Jeez, dude. And guys, when you find line and stuff like that in the pond, take it out. Don't throw that back in the pond. Any baits, any trash, any, you know, always take that out of the pond. Keeps the pond nice. Nice and maintained. I'm telling you, out here, I think we can get a bite up here. I'd usually say a big one. We didn't get any bites. Out here, I catch a lot of fish, but not as much on the size. So I kind of want to go down in that corner. That's where I've had the most luck. For big ones, at least. All right, this is prime time, baby. Let's do it. Where I've got most of my really big bites. I like how we got a little bit of wind pushing up in here, too. Nothing too crazy. We got a nice amount of wind just cruising up in this pocket. Well, big fish senses are tingling, man. They spingling and tingling. Ooh, dude, I just got hammered. Come on. See, they're not eating. They're not eating these moving baits today, man. Right there. And that's a treble hook bait. You just knock that thing sideways. I keep getting a lot of nasty stuff on it, too. A lot of grass at the top of the surface too it's kind of hard to stay out of it see he just slapped that thing one time it's kind of like that spinnerbait at the first pond they just he hammered the blade or something it's like they're not wanting to commit oh my dude that's two times in a row how do you how do you not get it though like that's just that's just unreal to me I'm telling you these are good fish too they gotta be one thing I like about the trap is that this this trap is just so aggressive and rattling around that I feel like they just get pissed off and they eat it. Like that spinnerbait's more, it's a little more subtle. I mean, you got vibration, but I feel like the lipless crankbait, it makes them mad. And even if they're not one to eat it, they'll sometimes just slam it. Oh no. What do I got? Oh my gosh, we are just catching everything on this lipless crankbait, at least we're making uh we're taking the trash out of the water. I don't even know what that is, dude. Oh my god, it's heavy as can be. Okay. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's our second catch on the lipless. This is just not what we want. We are making the water a better place though. It's like a tarp or something. I love how I was like barely hooked. Somehow toted that big old thing in. We're just gonna leave it right there. All right, no more trash, no more sticks. We need a fish, come on. We need something aggressive. There we go, dude. Oh my gosh. I'm talking he hit it so hard I couldn't move him. And stuck in that tree. Get out, get out, get out. Oh my gosh, we're bringing the whole tree in. Come here. Please, 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 please. Please, 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 please. Oh my gosh, come here. <laughs> Why is it making this so hard on us, dude? Oh. Don't. Oh my gosh. All right. my gosh dude oh my gosh she came off right at the bank and i happened to grab her dude no freaking way baby let's go son let's go not a big one man but that bite was intense got us in the tree came off right at the bank and i was somehow able to grab her with my hands dude oh my gosh well that is bait number two which is the lipless a pond number two complete guys what a hectic way to end it off right there let's head on to the next pond with our next bait thank you baby oh my gosh all right boys and girls we're out at another pond and this pond right here has some really big fish in it this is the 10 pounder pond and i'm so excited to get fishing out here so we've got the spinner bait done we got the trap done now let me show you guys the options that we have left so we got the crawls, we got the flukes, and then we have the old frog, baby. I think I'm gonna save the frog for last. I just feel like the topwater fish has to come at the end. 
We have used two moving baits. So now we have two soft plastics to choose from. And to be honest, guys, I want to slow down, use some a little different. So I think we're going to go with the crawl for our next bait. And this is just a standard, you know, the green pumpkin crawl right there, little speed crawl. So we're going to go ahead and rig it up on my rod, tie on a Texas rig, get the cast in, and hopefully catch a giant out of here. All right, so I brought my little Texas rig box out here. And we're going to rig up just a standard old Texas rig. Nothing crazy. Pretty simple. So we're going to get us a quarter ounce bullet weight. This is just a standard lead weight. Nothing crazy. Okay. And then we're going to get us a three yacht extra wide gap hook. I'm telling you guys, that's all you need for a Texas rig. It's an extra wide gap hook from three to four yacht. Just a little bullet weight. I'm telling you, this puppy catches fish now. And can we just talk about that last fish catch, boys? I mean, that, that was insane. I fished for an hour with like one bite and then ended up finally hooking a fish. She came off and I happened to grab her while she was off the hook inside the water. That was just insane. Hopefully this next fish catch isn't as hectic, but hopefully we catch a giant, boys. So there's our Texas rig crawl right there. Little lead weight, extra wide gap hook. Let's get to casting. The old 10 pounders live here now. The old big old 10 pound bass and there is horse flies everywhere out here. These things are annoying as can be. Oh my gosh, look at that cast. Oh no, I cast it right over some fishing line, dude. Hold on. Whew. That was a close one. <laughs> that was way too close for comfort. You know, the spinnerbait in the trap was so hard to get bites on. I'm hoping switching up, slowing down to the soft plastic is going to get us a bite pretty quick here. This pond right here is not easy to get bites in, but there's some really big ones. I was like, this is a perfect spot to come out to to try to just catch an absolute toad. Last time I came out here, I went back in this little creek. And I happened to catch a five. I think it was almost six pounds, five and a half pounder. It was an extra stout fish. All right, let's walk down. Dude, there is fish going crazy. I don't know if they're bass. It seems like they're mudfish. It's a bunch of swampy fish in here. There we go. Come on, baby. Let's go. Not a big one, but man, she slammed that crawl. There we go, boys, not a big one, but that is fish number three on bait number three on pond number three, baby. And uh, look at that eye on that fish right there. You see that? Oh my goodness, thank you, baby. Let's go. Now we go into bait number four to pond number four with the old fluke ski next. Thank you, baby. Let's go, son. And I wish we could continue fishing this pond, man. They seem so active, they're hopping around, but that's the challenge today, man. We got to keep running around. So for this next rig, throwing the fluke, we're pretty much going to do the same thing minus the weight. So we're going to cut this off real quick. Take that bullet weight off, and then we're just going to tie on this extra wide gap hook. Same deal, just weightless. That's three extra wide gap hooks. That's all you need for a lot of different baits, especially your soft plastics. There we go. Old smoking shad flukes, man. You know, we wanted the uh, pearl white flukes, but to be honest with y'all, I think the smoking shad one's gonna get shamoked, boy. They're a little melted. Not melted, but like bent in the package, but should be all right. We're just gonna rig this up on this hook, weightless, simple, clean. Boom, just like that, and we're good to go. All right, going through the force. We had to leave that other camera behind. It's a little too uh, woodsy up in here, but I like it. I don't know if you guys remember what happened last time. Go ahead and roll that clip. It was a disaster, boys. We do not want any of that today. We want a clean, simple time of fishing right here on the fluke. No more wasps or hornets. <laughs> None of that action, man. Well, here goes nothing. Got all sexy shad flute ready to go. 
And man, the last couple of times we came out here, we've caught some really big ones, man. So just fingers crossed. We haven't gotten to any giants today, man. The last fish catch came really quick. I'm telling you, the first two took an, over an hour a piece to get done. That last one took, I mean, probably 10, 15 minutes and we already had a fish. I'm thinking the same thing with this fluke. I think we can get a bite pretty, pretty quick on it. Let's just hope it's a big one. Maybe the corners will move. Let's go over here by this pipe. Oh, dude, that freaked me out, man. I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, there has to be a giant right there on that dang pipe. I hooked something on the bottom. I don't know what it was. I thought it was a big one coming out and eating it. Come on, Flukey. Come on, Flukeski. Catch us a giant now. <gasps> oh my gosh. Come here, boy. Let's go. Another mediocre sized bass, but that eat was insane, guys. I mean, that's a two pounder. Two pounder all day. I was hoping for like a four to five pounder, but dude, that eat makes up for it man oh my goodness we are moving now and look at that mark on that bass guys it looks like he was almost cut down his side there he's still healing it's really soft but pretty fish almost a two pounder and she came up and slunched that smoking shad fluke man we are moving and you know what that means we are on our final bait which happens to be the topwater frog and that is our last chance of trying to hook a five plus pounder I've been waiting all day for this moment. I know you guys have been too. Something about a topwater frog, man, is just the best fishing you can get on. So let's go ahead and head back to the truck, get our braid rod, and try to catch us our topwater fish. Here we go, boys, the final moment we've all been waiting for. The Strike King topwater frog, baby. We're out at a new pond. I've been able to catch them on frogs here really good in the past. And we got our braid crush combo. We're gonna go ahead and rig this puppy up, start casting it around and see if we can complete this challenge. I actually had a topwater snake on here. If you guys wanna see another video with the old topwater snake, let me know. I've been trying to find more of them. That's the only one I have. I know we did one last year and you guys loved it. I kinda wanna film another. So if you guys wanna see that, Definitely let me know. But here's our standard Strike King frog, man. Just in a regular green frog color. Oh man, we gonna get smoked, boys. We gonna get kerplopped. We've been on a roll too. Those first two ponds were difficult as can be. And these last two, we just steamrolled by. So hopefully we can do the same with this frog and just get exploded on. And let's pray that it's a big one. I wanna see a big one, man. This corner's been my lucky zone. And usually when I have a frog, I cut the legs a little bit, but I think we're just gonna rock with this one, man. He's gonna rock with it. I know it sounds weird throwing right there in the middle, but there's usually a little brush pile that's out there. Look at that. Oh my goodness, we're walking that frog perfectly. We're gonna go down in this corner over here. All these ponds we fish, man, are so dang clear. They have like cleared up over the last few weeks. Oh yeah, look at that. Come on, big one. All right, we're gonna walk over by this far tree. There's usually some fish stacked up. Do your work. Right there, man. Come on. I want to see a good explosion. There we go. There we go, baby. Mm. Let's go, son. That is bait number five, pond number five on the frog, and she slammed it, man. Look at where I hooked her. It's like under her chin. And that is not a giant, but that is a good two pounder. 
And that completes the challenge, baby. Five baits from Walmart on five different ponds. And the frogfish came last, baby. I hope you guys loved it. See you, dude.